Hey, hey, what is up? Rush Tube, Andrew Rooney here, full time drummer and drum teacher based right here in Auckland, New Zealand. I'm going to get straight to the message because it is a bit of a long one. That's what she said. Now, this is from some guy from Canada, which makes this a mystery PayPal request. Hello, Andrew. I've been watching your reactions for a year or two now and was one of your early comment defenders on the relative obscurity of Rush in Oceana. Still coming grief for that, which is very odd. Guys, not every band makes it to every part of the world. And Rush was not a band in New Zealand. It's not my fault. It's just the way it is. I know I know the band Rush. I, I knew who Neil Peart was. I knew the name. I haven't listened to Rush. None of my friends have listened to Rush. Anyway, we'll carry on. I would certainly be in favour of a deeper dive into this performance with a twist. Please allow me to explain. Requires some understanding of the backstory for this particular performance. I did witness the Toronto version of this concert in 2011. Rush obtained its big break in 1974 when their self-produced album was picked up by a program manager for a rock and roll station in Cleveland. She was one of the first female DJs in fact. She knew that the type of music they performed on the first album would appeal to the working class sensibilities of her listeners and she was right. Working Man was obviously the leader here. As a result of the record's success in Cleveland, the band was pursued and signed to a contract by Mercury Records out of their Chicago office. Thus it was particularly meaningful that Rush would should play Working Man as their final encore in Cleveland that night. So we're referring back to the very, very recent uh, first time watch I did of Working Man live in Cleveland. Amazing. It's also worthwhile to mention that the performance you watch occurred after a two and a half hour show. That is very relevant. As for the hints of reggae, they did that every now and again with various old standards in the concert, just to keep things fun, one supposes. So with that background in place, what I'd suggest is that you do a deep dive to compare and contrast the 1974 studio track on which John Rutsey played the drums with the 2011 Cleveland performance as well. Hopefully that wouldn't be too much for a single video. That is a lot. P.S. just to answer the question you had at the very end of the performance, that was a different song. In particular, it was from the opening of Cygnus X1 Book 1 The Voyage, which was the last song on 1977's Farewell to Kings. When combined with Cygnus 6, 1, Book 2, Hemispheres, which was the first song on 1978's Hemispheres, we have a masterpiece that arguably surpasses even 2112-2112 as a feat of pure virtuosity. Best regards, some guy from Canada. Okay, uh, we are going to get into this video for now. I'm going to track along with the Drumeo version, guys. You've got access to all of these resources. Just pick up my 30-day free trial on Drumeo. It's going to absolutely blow your mind what you can check out over there. Um, we're going to get into it. So we're going to be able to look at a note-for-note -note transcription of the song. As In terms of comparing this with John Rutzi on drums to how the song evolved over time, for now, you guys hit me in the comments. What do you feel was the evolution of the band? Obviously, you've got a new drummer. You've got that potentially awkward situation of do I just pay uh, tribute to the original drum track? Do I add my own flavor? I don't want to, you know, put too much of a stamp on it, perhaps, because we still have this original song with the two original guys that composed it here. Eh, you guys let me know in the comment section. But for now, we're going to check out Working Man Rush Studio version, John Rutsey on drums. Let's check it out. Seriously, absolutely amazing technology we got here.
Bill. Clems again. Honestly, almost giving me a little bit of a Black Sabbath vibe. This style riff, this big chord note um, beat with a halftime feel. I don't know. Hit me with your vitriol and hatred in the comment section, but I, I'm, it sounds it's got a little bit of a Led Zeppelin uh, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a Black Sabbath vibe. This riff, even the vocal style at this point. Interesting. Maybe it's a production error thing, but. Again, hit me in the comments. So why that's really effective, let's just back that up a little bit, is because for a brief second, or one bar to be exact, we go into a standard time feel, so it plays out like a fill almost, but it's just a it's just standard time. It's really effective. Here we go. It's in the pre-chorus two here. Check out how we go from our standard chord note half time feel, backbeat on the three to backbeat on the two and the four. Double the amount of backbeats in a bar, we get a double time feel, or double time on a half time, which is going to be a standard time. It's maths, people. Maths. Uh, uh, back to normal. Plans coming up.
brought the trash can in in here. It's pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, as I say, guys, you can get access to all of these resources. Just pick up my 30-day free trial. Uh, you can pick up all of these songs. They've got every single Rush song ever written, uh, transcribed note for note like this. It really is amazing. Um, and I think 6,000 plus songs in that database at this point. So in terms of comparing um, A being... I guess the two different versions, you know, we're talking close to 30 years after because that live in Cleveland with a different drummer, 30 years of evolution. Um, I feel like I would need to go back and really, I mean, to do a proper analysis, I would need to dig in and sort of go through section by section, listen to this verse, then listen to this first. Okay, that, that generally, generally speaking here, I feel like the two drummers have got a different feel. John Rutsey, to me, now, again, I haven't put this on a grid and looked at how uh, his degree of swing and his degree of or feel um, and where he sits in relation to the beat. He feels like a behind-the-beat player to me. Um, there was one section in here that really did feel behind the beat it might have been the guitar solo where i really noticed i was like wow okay so he's really um making it sound quite fat you know almost like draggy um with with the feel which i really enjoy neil pitt is a very he's very on top he's very on point he's one of these um metronomic players and again that's great as well especially for proggy stuff, when you're playing complicated stuff. I mean, you really do need to be pretty metronomic to get away with a lot of the type of stuff that Rush got away with and are going for. You need to have a very clear um, agreeance between the three people on where the time should sit. So the time feel here was uh, different. Uh, we've got a different sounding drummer. I mean, his backbeat sounds different to me, right? I mean, it's an old recording, it's 1974, um, and it does have that wonderful tape analog distortion sound, which I, I mean, I love. Um, I mean, on, from that perspective, like sonically, there's no comparison between the two. And again, I'm going off memory here with the live in Cleveland that I saw. I mean, that was just very sharp and defined and very glossy sort of um, in terms of the sound this is a bit fuzzier a little bit lo-fi drums are not overly loud in the mix either they're just sort of there um, so sonically very different I think section wise was felt completely different to me like I, I mean the reggae part and all of that stuff uh so I would have to go back again to see if they really did just change up sections like I'm remembering because I'm, yeah, I'd have to go back. The reggae part obviously was not in the original here. Fills. Again, doing a side-by-side -side on fills. The fills here, now this is never a critique of, I'm not here to critique any drummer. The fills here are pretty standard 16th note fills. A lot of flam fills. Bratum, 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 bratum. Um, Dave Grohl would be proud. Bratum, 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 bratum. Uh, we had a little bit of rudimental sort of stuff with the single stroke fours. Bratum, 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 bratum. Um, all that stuff. Uh, the fills on the live version, I mean, Neil just really lit them up and went, absolutely went to town on those. 
So I feel like the Phil's on the live one, Neil's approach. You know that he he um yeah, it's an it's an evolution on the Phil's. Again, I'm not saying one drum is better than the other. I'm not saying I like one version more than the other. I haven't listened to them enough yet. It's a one time listen on each song, um, and I'm going off memory. Yeah, this is this is a bit more straight down the middle. We're navigating sections. We're doing the fills where we need to do fills. Uh, drumming sounds great. Absolutely great. Uh, this drummer, has he's got a really, really nice feel for me, John Rutzi. Um, really just, just appropriate and just sort of sitting in the pocket. Really nice. The live version we saw was just, it was just a bit more on fire. It was a little bit more sort of fireworks feel. Um, it's very tricky too because you don't know what you you'll know. I don't know how long they marinated the song for. So from writing the song, composing the parts, it, you know, they, they might have just gone straight in and recorded it without much thought. And it's really tricky because sometimes the band doesn't want to play a song the same for 30, 40 years. You know, they might be like, well, hey, you know, you're not John Rutsey. We don't expect you to be John Rutsey. Um, just be Neil Peart and do do what you think is the right drum part. Um, obviously, you know, he's going to still be appropriate. He's Neil is a great musician and a great drummer, so he's still going to be respectful of the part and make it work. But, yeah, at this level... It's, um, you sort of, you're not really hanging on trying to recreate parts. I know Rush were very accurate uh, live. Well, they seemed on the most part to be very um, accurate, but yeah, it wasn't really the case here. So I don't know how they approached Neil doing the John Rutsey parts. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments. I'd really love some feedback on that. Um, so yeah, we've got a vastly different approach. We've got two drummers who uh, feel the pulse of music differently. That's the big difference, really. We've got drummers who hit the drums differently. You know, Neil's got a very particular way that he hits the snare drum. Uh, he's got a very particular way that he articulates the ride cymbal. This was a bit more of like, I like felt like it was like a jazz ride sort of sound. Um, it's just so beautiful. It was like on a cloud. You know, Neil's very direct and accurate with his ride plane. So that's, that's quite different. Um, again, guys, hit me in the comments. You know, we want to keep this all above board and respectful. And I can, from the bottom of my heart, tell you, I don't prefer one approach over the other. Both great drummers, both have done a great job on a song. You know, you've got to remember someone's come up with the original drum part as well. You've got to respect that. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a basic player. I'm I'm not a I'm not Neil Peart. I don't you know light it up like he does live. So um, yeah, as I say, please do hit me in the comments with your thoughts. Keep it respectful. <laughs> we, we don't want to go throwing shade in anyone. It's just, I guess, an interesting topic and an interesting dis discussion that has been sparked from some guy from Canada. I also really appreciate that background on the song and uh, background on the band in the comment there. It was uh, very, very nice. I look forward to reading your comments. Hit me with them below. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment and check out the original video link as always in the description of each of my videos. If you have a direct reaction request that you definitely want to get on the channel, the only way I can guarantee that is via the PayPal link. I do also have a Patreon, it's just $5 a month and you get access to all the blocked videos. If you would like access to the kind of resources that you saw in this video with the rolling transcriptions, all sorts of courses, can't even begin to describe how much good stuff is over there. Check out my 30 day free trial over at Drumio. It'll blow your mind. With that said, I'm going to leave it there. Have a great day. Until next time, keep chopping wood. Ciao.